We are super happy to introduce to you all the DHIC mobile UI library. I'm Marcos Campos, I'm one of the designers of the mobile UI and also part of the mobile uh, team in the HSG. Uh, I just want to thank you all to be here and also like thank uh, everyone that have been working very hard on this mobile UI library, uh, developers or the designers, other teams outside the HSG, and all of you that have uh, give us some feedback on it. So yeah, super happy to be here. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the the library itself. So yeah, uh, one second. So how everything started? Well, uh, everything started with a collaboration uh, with Result to Save Lives, which is an organization that uh, has like a mission for, to make the world safer. And they also have like a great tech team, developers that uh, also, especially uh, the design team is great, is very, very good. And they really help us uh, first realize the problem that we had in our previous designs on the DHS2 Android Capture App. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the context on how everything started, and then I'm gonna go a little bit further with how the, the library actually is. So what was the problem really? Uh, the, the, the problem that we found was that we had a poor piece uh, for data collection. It took a lot of time to, to really collect the data. And also organizations need to train the user, which usually means a lot of money and a lot of time. And that was really because of the decisions that we had in the past and in the design of the, the application. So we wanted to solve this problem and we ask us how, and the idea was to really listen to the user so we can collect some information then uh, take decisions uh, really reading the data. So for that, we needed to get closer to our users. So that's something that we did. We we travel a lot of the implementations in, in the world, and we start to observe uh, what the, the users were doing, how the day-to-day uh, is in a clinic, in a health facility, or what they are really doing every day, how they are using the application. So the observation part was very, very important. We took a, a lot of notes. And then after that, uh, we started to create some ideas, some prototypes, uh, and also testing how the, the current application work, was working itself. So we went there, uh, we talked to the users, but we also make them uh, maybe a try to the prototypes that we were working in the past. Um, yeah, we had a lot of results uh, that were good, that uh, the application was actually working well. But we have also others that were not that good, and we wanted to focus on those and try to improve them uh, so we can uh, improve the, the application. So this is how it looks. Well, there are some, some of the screenshots of how it looked uh, back in the days, uh, our application. And you can see easily that the font size was a little bit too small. It was for, for some people that more older people had pr troubles with, with the font size, for example. And this is something that we discover on the, on the user testings and the observations that we have. And there, you can see also like there are like a lot of different component styles, like different buttons or uh, different text sizes, different fonts even. And we had also complex icons and the navigation was also not very good <laughs> and sometimes. Uh, yeah, it was not a lovely design. It was good, so it, it worked, uh, but we know that we could improve this. Um, yeah, like, the biggest statement here is our interfaces were not intuitive and not consistent. I don't wanna say that they were very bad, they, they, they weren't, but they could be more intuitive and consistent. So that is more like in the interface side, 
but we also had some other problems or other things that we wanted to improve. For example, in the development. For us, uh, the development was slow, not, not slow exactly, but not efficient either. And we, we could improve there. Uh, sometimes we had to create a lot of different new components with the new designs. Um, sometimes uh, we just miss like a, a component sheet with all the components and, and that lead us to have some duplications of similar components that work very similar to each other because it was kind of a mess to 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 get everything there and it was hard to maintain too many different components. So we wanted to fix that to fix that too for our development team our development team. And also we want to help the DHSU community. There are a lot of developers and there are very good developers there, but we were missing on the alignment. Uh, our mission was uh, to try to align the different designs that we had in the whole community and also the, the, the core applications. So the, the final user feel that they are working on the same. If you have a, a value type to add this kind of data, it will look kind of the same uh, through the different applications. And also the developers in the DHS2 community, they had to start everything from scratch. We had already some uh, libraries like the uh, SDK uh, for, for Android or the program rule engine. We had also other components uh, to, to use, but not really like a whole library. So just give the 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 people in the community to have like a library will be a good thing to start. So we wanted to be better for your community. We wanted to be better for our developer team, and of course, be better for our users that are using the applications. And the solution for us was okay. We needed a, a design system. We really need it. So our objective uh, for the DHS2 mobile interfaces was reducing training. So we want to be the, the we want that to be really clear, or simple, like the user without any training will understand the how how it's gonna work. We also wanted to reduce the data collection needed time. So we wanted to, to make it faster to navigate. So with our prototypes, one of the things that we were testing was how much time do a user need to, to finish this kind of task? If you, we compare with the, the older interfaces, how, how this work. Uh, and also to be consistent and look the same through every view, not be like different things everywhere. And also be consistent with other uh, interfaces in other applications that the community might create. It's about the interfaces, but also another objective that we have is about mobile development. So we want it to be faster. So we, we knew that we could do everything faster and we want it to be stand, standardized. Like there are some uh, things that uh, the users can check to create very standardized uh, applications. And also we want this to be community driven. We wanted the community to step up and be able to create um, easily new applications. Um, yeah, like help them to, to make their, their easier, their, their life easier. So this is how the DHSG mobile UI library was born. And this is how it looks like. So there, are, here you can see some of the components of the of the library. So you can see like some labels, some uh, checkboxes, progress indicators, uh, labels, cards, uh, other type of indicators, also different type of, of forms uh, to to capture the different value types. Some banners, info banners, also palette, uh, like palettes for different colors. Yeah, and also this is how it's, uh, how it is to use it. So you can see here uh, one of the example. Uh, after after me, uh, Xavi in a minute will talk a little bit more about this and we'll do a very big demo. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is just a composable function that 
creates some as his tips. And is and, and as you can read, it's kind of easy to understand what is happening there. Like you could put a label and that will be the label that you will use, but you also can uh, using the composable uh, put some icons that are also other composables that are part of the library. But also you can enable the the assist chip if it's pressed or if it's selected. And you have like functions like on click to uh, put some functions uh, after the user click it or a batch like this small three that you can also pass. And we had also left uh, the modifiers there in case that you want to change anything like color or paddings or whatever that might be useful for your application. So this was the intro. Um, well, I'm gonna hand off uh, to, to Xavi. He's gonna talk a little bit more about the DHH mobile UI library. Thank you. <laughs> you have any question for me? Now is the time, or if not, we uh, after the, the demo. Thank you very much, Marcos. Just let me share my screen. One second. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, you can see it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Right. Okay. So I well I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Savi Savi Amloy. I am part of a, a mobile team too. We and I've been working. Uh, uh, over a year and a half with DHIS2. Uh, I actually started joining to DHIS2 to start in the mobile UI project. So, so I think right, it's been a great experience throughout. Uh, I wanted to start by thanking the design team and the RTSL team who have greatly collaborated with this initiative and without whom this would not be would not have been possible now starting with the design team that did all the research and everything to the developers and and your team and the rtsl team have really helped a lot with this now um okay so without further ado let's just get started so i wanted to get in the situation where uh, you're a developer you know, that wants to uh, implement the mobile ui in, in the library so we are and migrating all documentation to the developer portal for developers. So this is the DHIS2 developer portal. Okay. So you go to the mobile UI, sorry, uh, mobile development, yeah. and here we have the mobile UI. And I'm just one game to talk a bit about what it actually is. Okay. So it's a library and it's in composed multi-platform. Uh, what does this mean? It means that we can use it in, in in the desktop and Android, it's that's the, uh, the only things it supports up to now, but it will support uh, iOS in the future. Okay, it is written in Compose. Okay, so you will have to use Compose to uh, if you want to implement it in your in your application. However, um, it's uh, as you know, both Java and Kotlin and XML and Compose are fully interoperable. So, so. It's designed to be, to work properly, and uh, we have uh, a little guide here. Well, we don't have the guide; it's the Android Developers Guide. Um, but it's pretty straightforward to um, to use now. So, if you imagine you have a an XML Android app, uh, you can either create activities that are pure Compose, or you can also uh, add them in inside your actual XML view. Imagine you have a few, uh, an XML screen and you want to add it in. It's very straightforward to just add a, an XML compose view component and set the content with whatever compose view you want to use. Okay. Um, no. uh, so I think that's about it for our overview. Uh, as Marco said and Rene said, if you have any, any questions, feel free to write them in the chat. Then I will pass them on to me and I'll pass them on live. Okay. Okay. So after this, I let's show the showcase application. So we have the yeah, the library has a showcase application which will allow you to navigate that has all the components that we have so you can see them in an easy way. Okay. To do this, it's very simple. You just go to the release page that's in GitHub. And you would download 
the latest. Uh, yeah, so we have the, the Linux object too, but you only have to download it. And the, the, you have the APK artifact, you have the desktop artifact for both Windows and Linux. I have pre-downloaded this before. Okay, so you can see you can you download a SERP, uh, and then all you have to do is double click it and it should launch easily. Okay. Okay. Um so let me just make this a bit bigger so that you can all see it better. This is the desktop showcase app. Okay, which I have chosen just because it's more visible for the presentation. But you can also, I'll show uh, at the end, I'll show how to launch the APK showcase app. Okay. So let's just quickly go through uh, all the components. Not all of them, but uh, the main ones. Okay, second. Yeah, okay. So also, I don't know if Marcos mentioned it before, but um, we have designed it so that we can reuse components. Now, for example, so we have all these different inputs. Uh, and this is actually, this component is called an input shell uh, with, that we reuse through all the input components and that have, we have adapted for all the different types of value types or actions that we want to do. And so we designed this so that we it would manage the focus state and the error state and mandatory disabled and so on and we also it also has a supporting text which i'll go on later that can show that we can use to display uh, information messages error messages warning messages several of them and we have a legend which uh, is implemented here good now so these would be for for example number value types that would have a range now imagine um, a mother and if the, if she's too young then you would have the legend would be oh yes yeah, she's and the age is out of range or it's not an appropriate range and or you could just simply display a, a warning message okay so they all so all the input types are created so we designed it in this modular way so that it's reusable, so we can use all the components. So quite a lot of thought has gone into this. Uh, okay, so we'll go into the basic text inputs. So here's where you can see that um, we have the, we, all, we manage all the different value types. Uh, so for example, what they also have, we have reg, regex, regex validations. Uh, so here, you can see my my fingers, but you can I cannot, in input any le any letters that I can input numbers, no? and this is already managed internally by the component. Uh, but we also wherever we can we have allowed uh, customization. No? So for example, this has a default regex validation, but you if your use case just only want to allow I don't know uh, imagine five digits of numbers, you can uh, modify this to do that, and you can like maybe copy the regex that we have and uh, adapt it to your use case, or if you like. Um, same with the letter. So this will only let us enter one letter, will not allow us to enter any numbers and no dots. So it's all managed internally. And, and yeah, we've tried to, wherever we can, we've tried to manage it all internally. But sometimes, as I will show you later, it's not able, uh, we were not able to, due to the multi multi platform complexity of it, which I'll go into it in a while. Okay, I'll just show you a few of the others. So, we have the negative integer, integer. So it's the same as the number, only that it has the, the hyphen and the, on the value change it, it will send the negative value. Um, have the percentage one. Positive or zero. So we, are, I mean, this is adapted to DHIS2 uh, use case. Okay, so here I can have zero, but I can't have negative values. Have anything else? Okay, this is a simple text one that you could use. It would be the basic uh, text value type. Uh, unit interval. So you don't have. 2.5, but I believe you can't have full numbers. Yeah, so I'm trying to type in five here and I cannot. I can only 
type in values that go from zero to one. Okay. And this is all managed internally. Okay. And this is the supporting text component that I was talking about later, that it's inside all of the input text. So I'll show you, and we'll dive into the code later a bit, but this is, but you'll see that all components have the option. It would have like a list that you'd pass of a, a data model that, you know, and it, with a state and could be warning, could be error or same with the legend. Right? So you could either pass a legend range and it could be clickable if you want to display a pop-up or not. I think you could see it here. So we can decide if we want it to be clickable. We can not decide. So we've tried to make it as customizable as we can. Okay. Um, and go on to the action input. So this is where uh, we can see what I was talking about before. That is how you can, how, for example, in the input date component, we have manage the date picker. This will manage internally. No? Same with the time picker. Yeah. Um, however, uh, there are some components that we we are planning to to add it in, but for example, the file resource um, is managed completely differently depending if you like in desktop. Uh, it's different if it's Linux. It's different if it's if it's uh, Windows. It's different if it's a Mac, and obviously in an Android app, it's the same. So these this is is just setting the value for the use case, um, but. Uh, what we do is we just, we'd have you, if you implement this, you would have to implement the action that would be, in this case, would be select the file you know, and then download and so on. So wherever we we can, we have tried to manage it all internally. For example, QR code and barcode. Um, as you see, we have not implemented the scan action, but we have implemented the display action, which will display the pop-up with a QR code and the value and um, and different actions that you may want. No? Okay, but then we have uh, other components uh, that we that is not so easy to do. And so we are planning to do it in the future, but for now, uh, this will be have, will have to be implemented by the by the actual developers. Okay, as you can see, you can see all the state, different states that we have. Again, if anyone has any questions during this, uh, please feel free. And then we have also a logging component. So I'm going to make an example of this in the code on how you can very easily create a logging page in like less than five minutes. <clears throat> okay, so this would be the idea for logging now. You'd scan if you want to, you have the user, the password, you can show it and hide it. It's all done automatically. This button is also um, ours. Okay. Uh, let me see if we have any others that we'd want to show on oh, the input age. No, so then, um, so there's a lot. It started actually. It was it started small, but now it's actually grown to be quite, quite, quite big and quite. Um, um, how do you say it covers quite a lot of our use cases. I, I don't know. I'm really happy with this, and I think we've done a, a really nice project. Now. So this, you can choose to select the date, or you can just have it with years. Let's say in 65 years, it's a bit too old. Let's say I'm 24, three, 34 months or days, depending on the use case. So I think this is really, really nice. And also the value changes uh, like this will actually say, as it's an age, it will give you an, a date time, uh, a date object um, that will, you know, it actually calculates automatically. The, so if it's 30 day, three days in the past, it means it's 33 days old, but in with the input date time. No. Uh, sorry, not the input date time, with the date object. Mm, what else? Uh, the image component, no, it's automatically, it's maybe not looking very nice right now because I have the, uh, this is very big, okay, but just for the objective, but it looks great uh, in the app. And well, it looks great both places, but I just have it very big right now. So maybe that's why the image is not displayed as great. Um, the link component, uh, with all each have their buttons. Um, it all has, as Marco was saying, uh, 
nice design uh, and it's all um I'd say it maintains the same design throughout all the components so you don't have to worry about whether it looks different or not uh, for the org units too okay phone number at the polygon uh, which one did we have else a signature so so basically we tried to uh, we we are it is dhis to oriented so um we have tried to manage it well i think we actually have uh, all the different um, value types okay. then we have um bottom sheets for notifications uh, so we have the legend that you already saw um we can have it with scrollable content Um, here we, a lot of time we have examples uh, like validations for all the different types of um, options that we have. Uh, so there's like maximum size one. Uh, we just want one button, uh, search bar. So we use this for uh, all unit, for example. Or actually, we can also see it here. I can search whatever I want. The search component is also uh, so every absolutely everything that you see here is the mobile device. There's nothing that's uh, like it's all custom made and it's all um, done for this. Okay. Uh, no title, no content. No. So there's we we actually are starting to use this now and uh, implementing it in different places in the capture. Up. Okay. What else do we have? We have the different buttons. We have ton of buttons now and we have different styles. We'll show an example of this later and I'll see how you can have it filled. You can have it with icon, outline saying with icon without, enabled and disabled. Um, so basically these are the different styles now. So it'd be filled, outline, text, elevated, turn on, keyboard. But then we also have uh, color styles now. So it can be an error color style. It can be a warning color style or it can be just the basic one, which are the ones that we've been seeing. Um, we also, oh, well, I'll talk about this later. Um, we also have, oh, no, actually we have many more buttons to share. Uh, just one second. And uh, the, these are the ones, that, these are designed for the bottom shelves, uh, the pop-ups. And so we saw it before. So for example, when the QR code opens, you want to share it or scan it or download it. And they've all been, it's all prepared, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, check boxes, tabs. So these are the action buttons, which would generally be in the device on the bottom right. <clears throat> Sorry. Icon buttons, radio buttons, uh, which we'll see in the inputs later. So a lot of these, I mean, you can implement them yourself, but this one, for example, we use uh, actually, and we can finish with input types. So we have the option inputs. So here you can see where we use the radio button component. So we first design the radio button, then we design like the radio button list, and then, then we add it into the input shell and we call it the input radio button. Yeah. And we have the matrix, which has the, um, metadata icons, uh, sorry, avatars and so on. They're all selected. Also, they all have the disabled and uh, enabled and warning. So they all, as you can see, they all surrounded by the input shell. So they, they'll all have these values and you can also use the support interface. You can also just show legend and everything that I mentioned at the beginning. Sequential one. Checkbox that I showed before. Switch. And and many more. A drop down. I think it's pretty useful that you can just um, pass the model. As I say, we'll dive into the code later. And this is already dealt with. And all you need to worry about is uh, maybe doing a small adaptation for your use case or troubleshooting it. And multi select. It's actually one of the most complex ones. Yeah, in the library, sorry.
Okay. Let's go and let's just actually we don't have that don't have time, but it's being taken uh passes faster than I think. Uh, so let's just quickly take a look at the rest of the components. So these are um for the TI and dashboard screen, for example. Right? We have the info bar component to display information about the actual TI, and then we have the <clears throat> The detail and this actually we're not showing it right now it also has the option to add an avatar with the image or maybe just the just the a letter uh, however you want right now it's not been displayed because we are showing it in this case um oh sorry actually go back to this they also are clickable if you want them and you can have choose to display some always or to and to display some only if you expand and you can choose the number that you want to display. Uh, same for the list cards. So this is very similar component. This is what I was saying, mentioning about the avatar. So in the card detail, it's actually shown on the top right. Um, but yeah, it's the same. So you can add icons. It has the key value. Uh, you can add buttons to it. Uh, and yeah, I think it's great. You can customize. As I say, we've tried to make it as customizable as we were able to but also making sure that it kept um you know maintained the style throughout everything and or try to keep it with a dhis style too also okay the chips that actually and this is the one that marco showed before uh legends that we've already gone into Okay, progress indicators, sections for data entry, uh, and the same, we can have them make them collapsible, uh, or we can have them flat, uh, as is shown. So this is where we're using all the, um, the other components that we've done. Uh, so, uh, so the errors in the warning, I think this is a tag or a chip, I don't remember right now. And yeah, we try to make it as customizable uh, as possible. The search bar we have shown before. Mm, tags, and this is what I was saying that's used in this section. Uh, the avatar that I said before. Okay. And say, oh yeah, we also have the navigation bar. So this is just for the bottom. And we also have it for the top. Somewhere. Okay. Um, this is also a nice one that we added in uh, first to the end. Uh, this is for uh, TIs. Well, not necessarily only TI, but for uh, search pages. Uh, so you can add something and uh, say test for Savvy. Okay. I want to search all the TIs that have. The name Savi, then I delete it and it shows again, and so on. Here I would scan it if I wanted to. As I say, it's not scan is not implemented right now uh, in the actual app because it's a showcase, but it would that would be the use case idea. Okay. And I think that's it for the showcase app. Okay. I mean you can download it from the releases uh, page, but you can also if this is what you would see if you clone the repository and you launch it in your in your ID. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so after this, um, we also I, I wanted to go and show a bit and the Figma design system, which uh Marco showed before. Um another thing that the library has is a foundation component. So it has color palettes. It has, I'll actually show you. So if you click here, it will show, take you to, to Figma. Uh, you can open it, and I've reopened it before to get ready for this. And so here is where you can also see all the all the components that the mobile UI has now. So this is what I was talking about for the foundation values. So we have all the different primitive colors. and. And then we have the tokens for them now. So we they all save. So we so it follows the theme. And I think that's great. Um, we have elevation values. OK. 
okay, for different, yeah, well, as I say, the design, as I'm not a designer, I can tell you a lot about this, but I can tell you that the uh, design team has put a lot of thought and effort onto this, okay? These are all the DHIS icons, which also come from Material 3, okay? Typography, the different sizes, it has the all the space and everything, shapes too. Okay. So that and this also, you know, okay, so if I'm using I, I want to add a button in or or I don't know, a frame or container, I can just use extra large and I know it's always going to be the same <clears throat> throughout the app, and I don't have to remember to use 28 dp every time. Okay. Um, yeah, and so here you can also navigate through all the um, all the things that the mobile UI library has. Uh, so this part, for example, is all the different components used for the form. Now here's the date picker for the file resource, the age field, and so on. As I say, it's it's grown to be quite quite a big uh, library. Well, not not, not huge, but uh, it's become more and more complex. Okay. What else? Um, yes, and this is more for designers, um, which can also do very easily with this. I actually just did that for one second. So you can very easily create mockups uh, for whatever you want to do. So what I'm going to do, I can just copy and paste this. I can move this over here, uh, make it a bit bigger. As you can see, make this uh, bigger too. And I can say, okay, so we'll, I want to add a screen and maybe do this because that will make that bigger. And I want to say, I want to add an indicator at the top, like this one, for example. And then I go back to device and just paste it in here. Bigger so you can see. As I say, this is more a uh, designer's tool, so I'm not that familiar with it. Um, but you can do it. Well, that's what do you want to say? If I want to add also an info bar, because it's going to be an enrollment, I can do it like this. Just add it in too. Okay, and then just to, so that I can have a quick look or idea of how what the end result is going to be say oh i want to have a fab button at the bottom actually i just wanted this one anyway i think you all get the idea okay so i'm going to pass on to this because we don't have that much time left. Uh, and yeah, so this is basically, this is how you can easily create prototypes in Figma. Uh, and so then you don't have to actually do, write all the code so that you need to see, but this is a, this is I think, more interesting for developers. Okay, uh, finally, uh, if there are not any questions, I'm just gonna go into, uh, dive into the code a little bit. Okay, I did want to show you um, how to, um, it's available in the documentation, um, but there's a very easy way if you're running it on an emulator to install the Android APK. I've been using the desktop app just because it's easy to display, but you can just simply drag it onto here. You can see it's installed in it and it's been installed and here it is. So yeah, the Android uptake always, uh, also with Android Studio, it takes a while longer to launch. That's why I was using the, the desktop app, just for time issues. But you can see everything here too. So I can choose uh, the component that I want, basic text inputs, and everything. So it's exactly the same that we had that I was displaying in the desktop. Okay. Um, okay. So, yes, actually, um, Let's go on back to the developer portal. Okay. Second. Sorry about that. Yeah. 
So I'm a developer now, and I want to add, uh, in my, I imagine I want, I'm add using my creating a custom data as to app. And so what you'd have to do is just if you create an Android app, add the dependencies like this. If it's a desktop app, you add them like this. And if it's multi-platform, it's like that. You can see it's just changed in the artifact. So every time we uh, publish a release, it'll, it generates uh, three different artifacts right now. Uh, when we create the add um, iOS support, it will also create the iOS artifact. And that's just how you do it. And uh, depending, make sure if you have a hybrid app that is using XML, you, uh, remember you must enable Compose. Um, but then you can, uh, you see all those details in the Android developers documentation. Okay. And uh, talking about documentation, we, we do generate documentation until fully documented. and. Uh, it could be improved, so you might see some uh, some typos and things. So we are working in it, um, but you can see everything is fully documented now. So this is where I wanted to do the live example. So let's start with a button, for example. Okay, so we can see all the different things and all the different values that it has, all the uh, if they're default, if I can modify them or not. Uh, so if we go. Have a screen ready here. Uh, button, uh, for example, and as I say, as it's documented, this will work. Uh, so I can see all the different values that it has here too. I can. I don't only need to look at it through, through the API. Um, but uh, as I say, it is all fully documented. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Let's try and do uh, a button. Um, so what we're going to do, we want a button, we, the text is going to be, I don't know, uh, say we want to save, no? We want to save button, so the style is going to be primary. I do have a GitHub Copilot, so that's a bit uh, cheating, okay? But I, I'll just write it down, okay? It's not so intelligent. Okay. The color style, so this is where you can see the different color styles. We have default, error, a warning. In this case, it will be default because, mm. because we don't want to, um, because we, we want a save button. And we obviously have to enable the on click action, which in this case would be, we would just add a to do. Okay. And just going to continue doing this so I can show the different styles. Uh, imagine we, have, we want to do a discard button. In this case, we want the style to be this text. And as it's as we are discarding values, we want to add a, oh, a warning to it. Okay. And then we want to add finally. Second. And we want to finally want to add, imagine we're going to add a delete button. And it's as deleting is very dangerous. You want to say it's everyone. And let's say, um, so no, why not? Okay. I'm going to, the way you launch it, uh, you launch the um, desktop up, and you just need to. Uh, run gradle run in the control. Uh, I'm going to do it in the desktop app just for, um, as I say, speed reasons and time issues. Let's see, this is the old one we had. It's running and it should open up automatically in a second. Unfortunately, it's live, it takes a bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, and I also think this is a great moment to ask a community uh, yeah, if they have questions as well. Questions as well. Um, because, um, you know, as you said, time is running out. It's uh, it's, get, it's getting close to the end, so I want to leave some time for, for questions too. Um, let's wait until this builds. I'm not sure how long it will take. 
it, it does like take no time at all uh, usually but obviously as soon as i'm sharing my screen it takes much longer of course i don't know i didn't check the chat if there are any questions um so far there has been no questions so that's that's hopefully a good thing um i don't know uh, uh if people are waiting for questions, but um, maybe they were waiting for your two shows in code. <clears throat> oh, it's nearly there. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So I've actually already got the screen here, so you can see the save one and the discard button and the delete. Okay. So it's very, very simple. And I finally just wanted to show you how to do a very quick uh, login page, okay? Second. Second. Okay, so basically what we're going to have, we're going to have a server. Um, bar, no. It's going to be this one. As I say, you should look um, yeah, at the documentation. Okay, and um, then we're going to have a username. It's not going to be admin, it's going to be savvy. Okay, okay. and then we're going to have a password. Okay, so and then we're going to just quickly create the so we have input uh, QR, for example, because we want to be able to scan it. Uh, and the title is going to be a uh, server. Okay, and the state is going to be unfocused uh, on value change. Um, change this up on value change. Finally, actually, I just copied here yeah, because I have it ready made, and I'll show you. Obviously, we did it all live. This, I guess, I'm running out of time, so I'll just quickly show you like this rather. Okay, so you can see we have a QR code, and then with a value, user, and password, and I'll quickly run again. So with the desktop up, you do need to close it or end it. So it launches again. So it's getting much faster now, hopefully. Give it one second. Show you. There is it. And we do have uh, six minutes, as you were saying, Rene. Uh, can see the chat. I don't know if there have been any other questions up to me. Uh, there you go. 97 minutes just about finishing. There we go. So there we have that. Oh, and we forgot our login button. No? So we just do uh, the button. There's the text is going to be login. And the style is going to be filled to. Okay. And the outlook is just going to be no. And we'd have to. To do. Okay. Yeah. I launched it again, and we just, and you can see I have the button here. And it's very, I mean, it is taking a while to, to launch, but as if there are any Android developers here, which I hope they are, um, it takes 
quite a while and less than it does when you are uh, launching the the Android app. Oh, it takes it just takes longer. Okay. So I think I haven't uh, forgotten anything. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Let's just wait for this to launch and see the final um, login screen result. Awesome. And I, I just wanted to mention um, the, it was sort of casually said, but let's just celebrate the moment that Android documentation also is on the developer portal um, that launched actually this week. Uh, so we quietly launched the the this section of the developer portal, um, and I'm happy to say that it should be expanding in the future as well. So any Android developers here that uh, are looking for documentation can also look into the developer portal, and hopefully uh, at some point in the near future, you'll always go to the developer portal for all the Android documentation. Um, but that's a it was a it was a nice moment that. Um, the developer portal is actually becoming uh, now for mul multiple platforms, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, um, here's an example just to uh, wrap up. Um, as we saw when the when it ran, you could see that the, the button was displaced to the left, which was didn't really look very good, or maybe that's not how you want it. So here you can see how we allow your own customization. How uh, well, basically, all I did was add the modifier and the fill match width, and then we can add whatever we want. And I have, this is how you could customize each component. Okay, so I think that's about it from my side. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed working on it. And again, thank you to the design team and to the RTSL team. Uh, without whom this would not have been possible. Yeah. Thank you very much.